961 to renovate Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium, to build a brand new modern stadium, air conditioned with all facilities, day and night lights, etc. It cost you 80 crores an hour. I mean, 12 times is only for renovation. Now, all these is, this is now being investigated. Now, we will never know whether the actual culprits will ever be booked, be booked because all the cases of the past, whether it's Bofos or whether it was the Hawala case, etc., nothing has really emerged. And therefore, this, and then you have this Adash housing scam, and then you have this illegal mining scam, whereby the the natural mineral resources of our country, the way in which they are being looted is something that is not only the actual loot of country's mineral resources or country's wealth, but it is also having an, a collateral damage which this entire, uh, entire uh, crony capitalism is having on our system. I am not very comfortable using this term collateral damage because it is normally associated with US bombings of Iraq and the civilian deaths which are described as collateral damage. But the collateral damage of this corner capitalism is not only the loot of the country and loot of country's resources which is its primary purpose. But it is having damage in all other areas and if you take this case of illegal mining for instance, that this illegal mining today in just one part of our country that is in Karnataka, Andhra, in, and Orissa, the, the, that, those border areas. It has already diverted 1.6 lakh hectares of India's forest land has been denuded because of this illegal mining. And when today you know you have technology whereby you can preserve your forests, you preserve your environment as well as mine your uh, mineral resources. But because it's illegal, and because it is done with the slate of hand and done in darkness, you have the denudation of forests and that is causing a great deal of environmental damage and environmental damage through such chronic capitalism is one of the collateral damages. Look at it from, the, uh, uh, from another angle, the illegal iron ore mining in our country alone, illegal iron ore mining in our country alone has used up 77 million tons of water in just one year, that is 2005 and 2006, for which you have the data. This would have been enough to meet the daily needs of more than 30 lakhs of our, 30 lakh families in our country. It's just of iron ore mining I'm talking about. And then in one year, 2006 alone, 1.84 billion tons of waste was dumped on fertile land. Therefore, contracting the area of arable land in our country and creating the problem of how to uh, I mean, disperse this waste. So in every area where your, your environment, let's say the resources like water, your question of waste dumping which is reducing your area, sole area in our country which will impact on your food grain production. This crony capitalism not only loots the resources of our country, but it also has a collateral damage in various fields and apart from all that I have mentioned, the biggest collateral damage it is having today is on our system of democracy itself. Today, if you go to Karnataka or even in Andhra Pradesh in those parts, to contest an election, an MLA election, MLA election, it was told the last election that was held in Karnataka, on an average, four to five crores of rupees was spent by major party candidates in every assembly seat. Your assembly seat, spending four to five crores means multiplied by six or seven, depending on the case, that will be the cost for a parliament seat. And you have your, your election commission expenditure limits of 25 lakhs for MPs and, and certain I mean, lakhs for your MLAs, makes a complete mockery of that. The net result is what? People's mandate is not being sought on the question of principles, values or policies. People's mandate is being bought by using the, these monies gained through this story capitalism in order to purchase your elections. Literally purchase them, not steal like Obama says, but it's actually purchasing your, your victory by using these monies. So the net result is genuine political people who may have very good ideas, who may have very good visions for the country, they are completely out of the race and democracy itself is getting thoroughly distorted. 
So combating crony capitalism is not only an issue of morality. Of course it's an issue of morality. Of course you can't allow people to go away, make merry and make money like this, looting our country's resources and <coughs> not allowing the government to earn what is due to it. So it's not only an issue of morality, it's not only an issue of bringing the culprits to book, it's not only an issue of cleansing the system so that such manipulation cannot be done in the future, but it has also got to do very, very deeply with the quality of democracy itself in our country. Now this distortion of democracy is something that is going to cost us very, very dearly in the, in the future, where the decisions that are made by the people to whom to elect is not determined, as I said earlier, by programs and policies, but determined by the amount of money that they will receive in order to be purchased. So this combined with the power of the muscle power, money power and muscle power together is actually distorting democracy completely in our country and this is a very, very serious collateral damage that is taking place due to this story capitalism. On the other hand, what is, uh, I mean, what is the damage it is doing to the future of our country? 1,76,000 crores. Maybe all of you dealing with management and dealing with this huge sums of amount can even conceptualize or visualize this amount. But for many of us, 1,76,000 crores, how many zeros to follow, what will happen, and it's, it's very difficult even to understand. But then, if you look at it on the absolute back of the envelope calculations, as economists will say, the Planning Commission and the NCAER, there's a National uh, Council for uh, Education Research, Applied Education Research, and what? Administration and Education Research, no? Applied NCAER, uh, this is uh, that uh, educational thing? NEPA, NEPA, National Institute for Education, Planning and Administration. They have, they have estimated 35,000 crores or rupees per year for the next five years in order to realize the right to education bill that we passed in the parliament recently. That is 35,000 per annum for the next five years would mean 1,70,000 crores. With this 1,76,000 crores in the 2G scam alone, forget Commonwealth, forget others colony, forget illegal mining, etc. In this 2G scam alone, if this money was not allowed to be looted, we would have provided education for all in our country, all children, between the age of four and between the, uh, between the age of uh, six and fourteen, as the constitution uh, uh, demanded. All to every single child would have been educated in our country if this loot didn't take place. Or on the, on the other hand, your National Advisory Council, headed by Mrs. Sonia Gandhi, when they were talking, debating on the right to food, or the food security bill, when we were raising the demand saying that you abolish this above poverty line, below poverty line category, because in, by having this sort of targeted public distribution, it is not reaching the people who require food in order to survive. And then we said, give 35 kilos of rice, to all families in our country. So they calculated that if 35 kilos of rice or wheat is given to every single family, from Tatas downwards to the poorest to the poor, for every single family, if you give 35 kilos of rice at 3 rupees per kilo, they said we will require 82,000 crores more of expenditure. 1,76,000 crores, we could have done it for two years continuously. So it's not only, as I said, a moral question, it's not only a question of preventing the loot and taking action against the people, it's not only a question of preventing the collateral damage that is taking place in our country, but it is also a question of depriving the future of our country from what we as civil society must be obliged to provide to all people in our country. You have a very peculiar situation in India today where you'll have our Prime Minister rubbing shoulders at the high table in G20, where you'll have all the P5 heads of states or the Prime Ministers visiting India in the last six months. Only one is left now, that is your Prime Minister of Russia, who's going to come a week later. 
Otherwise, all the five, the big five, have already visited. Four of them have visited our country. So, on one hand, you are talking of a resurgent India, and we are saying that we are one of the two, along with China, we are the only ones who actually withstood the global financial crisis, and we have a positive growth rate. That is one aspect of in the India story. That is the story of the shining India. But then the other aspect, there was a colleague of mine who recently died, in, uh, recently died unfortunately, Arjun Sengupta. I think he also used to come here to, Arjun Arjunda used to come here to, to lecture also. He headed a committee on the unorganized sector, appointed by the Prime Minister of India. And he came out with a startling, startling discovery of the Indian reality where he estimated that 77% of Indian people, 77% of Indian people are living on less than 20 rupees a day. And on the other hand, when this global crisis was going on, in those one year, in fact, only 2009, the number of Indian billionaires me measured or counted in terms of US dollars the number of Indian billionaires doubled from 26 to 52. And what do these, I mean, one sense we feel proud, the third, fourth and the fifth of the world's richest people are Indians. Or the one, two, three, fourth, fifth, sixth are, are Indians. But these 52 gentlemen together have assets worth 25% of India's GDP. 25% of India's GDP is in the hands of these 52 people. 77% of your people today live on less than 20 rupees a day. All of us are familiar with our farmer suicides. But what is the worrisome thing is the health of our future. 50% or more of our children suffer from malnutrition. And the startling figure that this National Family and Health Welfare Survey has, uh, has brought out is that nearly 70% or at least more than two-thirds of the pregnant mothers in our country suffer from anemia. They are producing our future. The state of existing children is what I just told you. The future children, is that is the state of the mothers. Now in this situation, can this country afford? Can this country afford to let our resources be looted like this through this crony capitalism? And the management of our democracy is impossible in a democratic sense and in a popular sense unless we are able to combat and eliminate such crony capitalism from our system. So eliminating crony capitalism from our system is required for the strength of our democracy itself, for preventing our country from suffering from these collateral damages. Most importantly, it is necessary for us to build a better India in the future. What is today happening is the building of two Indias. You have a shining India on one hand, so you'll have